this is uh, uh, 7.5 to 7.8 um, physics uh, nuclear whatever what are uh, what affects the rate of radioactive decay quantity of the radioactive material kind of radioactive material it's over here in the book yeah these two uh, question two Radioactive material should be handled with extreme care. What are the risks? Again, over here. Memorize it, all of them. Okay. Uh, never eat or drink. Do not look directly into a source. Wash your hand. Whatever. Blah blah blah. Question three. Uh, what are the uses of radioactivity? Okay. Again, in the book. Any one. Memorize them. Uh, tracing, determining age, sterilizing food, blah, whatever. Uh, what are advantages of nuclear energy? It limits the production of CO2. It limits pr the production of acid rain. And there will be no shortage of fuel for nuclear energy. Because nuclear energy does not pollute. Okay, it's clean. Uh, it's relatively cheap to build. Obviously not. It's producing waste. Obviously not. It does produce waste. And that's nuclear waste. But not uh, polluting waste. If, uh, these three are correct. The nuclear reaction where a heavy nuclear splits. Obviously it's going to be efficient. What are disadvantages of nuclear energy? Obviously, in case of failure, radiation can seep through the environment. Nuclear plants pollute the environment. No, we said they don't pollute. Uh, the half life is often very long. We said that's true. Uh, they contribute to global warming. No, and a very large amount. No, obviously not. Which of the following statements? Questions. Which of the following statements describe the safety measures? Again, make sure it's pointing away from you and should be locked up in a safe place. A lead box is always ideal since lead prevents uh, radiation. Okay, uh, advantages of nuclear energy do not contribute to the greenhouse. Okay, I'm repeating myself at this point. Uh, oh, I'm going way too fast. I need the monetization. Uh, question nine Consider the following isotopes of potassium, select the most stable isotope. Okay, when they're asking you for the most stable isotope, always remember when looking at stability, you need to look at the ratio of n to z. Okay. For small numbers, okay, the ratio for small numbers, the closer the ratio of n to z is closer to one, the more stable it is. Okay, since we're working with nineteen, this applies. Then after, uh, it's in the book. When atomic numbers, uh, where is it? Here. So for light nuclei up to z equals twenty, for which the neutron proton ratio is nearly equal one, it's stable. Uh, and this ratio increases up to about 1.5 for larger nuclear up to Z83. So maybe they get you, I don't know, a bigger nuclear. Maybe they get you 76 in the exam. But into what you have to do, find the ratio of N to Z. Neutrons over protons. Not mass number divided by protons, okay? It's a mistake uh, I, I made, okay? Uh, please make sure. Neutrons divided by protons. So, like, we're going to have to find each one. So the neutrons in this case would be 21 because you just subtract. We're going to do 21 over 19 then here's gonna be 20 over 19 here it's gonna be 17 over 19 this is gonna be 15 over 19 okay so which one's closest to one obviously it's gonna be this one okay so that's why you choose this one then part B uh, use the following table whatever uh, one of the potassium isotopes of, of uh, undergoes spontaneous beta minus so this potassium produces uh, let's call it an element x plus beta minus so e minus one zero okay as a result another element is produced what element will be produced okay el potassium horn let's fill it out we said it was 39 90 well the mass doesn't really matter because we're working with beta so the mass doesn't really change but uh, since we want to find this x right so let's call it x here and here obviously is 39 so x plus this charge here gets me 19 so x plus negative one so we can just say minus one equals 19. So obviously x will be 20. So the charge will be 20. But then you say, I'll charge that. So I'll any element. So I'll go to atomic numbers. Which one is 20? Calcium. Okay. Question 10. Uh, okay. These graph questions are a bit trickier. Uh, what they do is they give you a graph. Okay. And usually it would be uh, activity. Okay. Uh, or mass. Okay. And they'd ask you to determine the half life. Okay, to determine the half-life, you just take two, any two points and figure out how long does it take for this quantity to become half. So here it's about 4,250. When does it become 2,125? Because half of 4,250 is 2,125. So at this point here, actually, 
is 2125. So if you find the distance between them or the time between them, uh, let's scroll down all the way. I know this could be a bit tricky in the computer, but this is going to be 2.5 seconds. So, oh, top lead, how do you count the square down? How do you know how much each square? Whatever. Okay, subtract to find this one as the graduation. 5 minus 0 is 5, and divided by how many spaces? I have 10 spaces. So each space is 0 0.5. And I have 5 spaces here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 times 0 0.5, that's 2.5 okay the background radiation rate okay the background radiation is always the radiation you have when like you know how the graph goes down like this when it starts to seep constant that's the background radiation because at this point the mass of the the mass of the radioactive source would be so little that it would be negligible and at this point only background radiation would be detected okay question 11 again same question uh, what's the half-life of the isotope? So easiest thing is just look at the point to give you the start 200 then when does it become 100 as go to 100 I uh, see this one's easy. They gave it to you directly easy numbers. So how long is it in between them? One year, okay um, Three years after the measurement began what was the mass gonna be so let's go to three years, okay? We don't know how much it is. Okay. We know that the half-life is one year. Okay, so a way I did it, okay? At the third year, okay, at the third year, I know it's going to be half of the second year because the half-life is one year, right? That's how I did it. So at the second year, it's, the, it's sorry, 50. So, yani, at the third year, is going to be half of 50, which is going to be 25. That's how I did it. Uh, you guys might have a different way. I don't know. Uh, the mass of nitrogen 16 is initially 120. After 21 seconds, it reduces to 15. Okay, the half-life of the sample is 7. Uh, well, okay, and how much is the mass? Okay, look here. To determine the half-life, okay, and when you have mass, okay, I'm going to give you an equation for the half-life, okay? Is it, the final mass is equal to the initial mass divided by 2. Except not 2, it's 2 to the power of n, where n is the number of half-lives. Because, you know, with half-life, you keep on dividing by 2, dividing by 2, dividing by 2. But that, that's why, since we keep on dividing by 2, we put this power over here. So, let's see here. The final mass is 15. 15 equals the initial mass, which is 120, divided by 2 to the power of n. How do I find 2 to the power of n? 2 to the power of n would be equal to 120 divided by 15, which is 8. So 2 to the power of n equals 8, and this is an easy number. 2 to the power of what gets me 8? Obviously, n equals 3. So 3 half-lives. But did they ask me how much uh, half-lives? No. So this 3 half-lives, and how much time? 21 seconds. So 3 half-lives, it's uh, HL, Took me 21 seconds. So how much is one half life? Obviously, it's going to be seven seconds. Okay. A further seven seconds later. So see how they gave you the time here. So they're saying after seven seconds. So you don't realize if our half life is seven seconds. So after seven seconds, another half life. So the the mass would have halved at this point, right? So after seven seconds, what's going to happen to the mass? It's going to half. So if it was 15, try to it's going to divide by two, and it's going to become 7.5. Okay, question 13. Uh, okay, rank the following doses of radiation according to the equivalent dose they produce. Uh, put the highest one as 1. Okay, look. Rads is a unit of how much radiation? So, logically, 50, then 30, then 2, then 0 0.5. But what do you do? why is 2 rads higher than 30 rads? Look, when it's alpha, you multiply by 20. Okay? Always. If, uh, that's just how you do it. So... When it's alpha here, when you say 2 rads of alpha, it's the same as saying 40 rads. Okay? Uh, and they mentioned this in the book over here. Uh, all the way at the bottom. Okay? And some neutrons. Neutrons are highest as well. Okay? Uh, but gamma and beta are 1. But alpha, you multiply by 20. 20 times more half. Okay? For high 40. For what's the highest? Obviously, it's going to be this gamma. Okay? Then the second highest would be 40. Okay? Then the third would be 30. And then the last would be 0. Question uh, 14. Okay, the type of. Okay, so we have a, a setup to check whether the level of yogurt is above a certain level. So basically, what's going to happen here, okay, we're going to shoot some radiation across here, okay, to the detector. And basically, if it. If the detector detects the radiation, that means our radiation here was able to pass through the yogurt. <coughs> Sorry, it means that our radiation here was able to pass through the glass or plastic or whatever uh, and reach the detector. And if it reached the detector, 
that means there's no yogurt here so you have to choose a type of radiation that if there was yogurt it would get blocked okay we have three types alpha beta or gamma okay uh, gamma. what did we say about the penetrating power alpha gets blocked by one centimeter uh, sorry five centimeters of air so do you think it would make it through this glass obviously not we're left here now with beta and gamma. gamma we said doesn't get blocked so it goes all the way so would it be sensible to use gamma even if there were yogurt here the gamma would still move past it so i can't really tell is that the yogurt is there so that leaves me with beta beta we said is in the middle okay it gets blocked by five five meters of air one millimeter of aluminium so yani at some point it's going to get blocked so basically what's going to happen is i'm going to shoot this beta here okay and if there is yogurt it's going to block it and the detector won't detect anything sata and I'm going to look at my detector, I'm going to see, ah, there's no radiation. So that means it wasn't able to pass through the yogurt. That means that the yogurt is actually at this level over here. So if there wasn't yogurt, the beta would continue normally and it would reach. And I'd say, ah, oh, my radiation managed to find its way through the glass. That means the yogurt isn't filled up to that level. So that's why we're going to use beta okay because it has penetration power in the middle gamma was, would be too strong and alpha would be too weak okay and a radioactive sample of the source should have a long half-life to last longer okay whatever Just, i guess I... question 15 uh label the blanks this is very easy obviously 15 minus 15 0 and then 7 sorry uh 6 minus 7 is negative 1 you always subtract the left by the right though question 16 Okay, this one bit the right turkeys. Okay, they gave us that the background radiation is 25. Okay, keep that in mind. So I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna write it down. Okay, oh, uh, you know, I'm gonna put it in the open world. Heck, on change your name. Not to current page. Okay, so. Uh, our tunnel background radiation is 25 okay keep that in mind please okay so what is the measured count rate of the source alone okay stress on source alone source alone means this is total this is total counts over here it's total now, now what did we say we do if they want the source alone you have to subtract the background radiation okay so they're saying at zero time so at the start how much is it it's 120 and i want to get rid of the background radiation because i only want the source for uh, 120 minus 25 it's 95 after one half life has elapsed what is the count rate due to the source alone? Again, nahna am nahki source alone. What was it before? 95. After one half life, what's gonna happen? It's gonna divide by two. 47.5. Tayyib. This is from the source alone. What is the count rate measured by the detector? Horn? This is where people will mess up. Okay, some people here they're gonna put 47.5. I don't understand why. Detector detects all the radiation, detects both the background rate and the source okay is a source 47.5 at one half life if the source is 47.5 and i ended background radiation background radiation is like that friend that's always there okay wherever you go you that friend's following you okay whatever you do that background radiation will always be part of the equation so you didn't forget here but now they just asked what's the source so what do i have to do here they want the detector so it's background radiation plus source okay so i would add this 47.5 plus 27 uh, plus 25 and that's 72.5 okay what is the approximate half-life okay you're gonna have to look at it from uh 120 so we started at 120 okay here it's at 120 when you want to measure the half-life uh at, you have to look at the graph okay we went from 120 to 72.5 so from 120 to 72.5 72.5 is over one to over here i think so, oh whoa oh my days that's a shit line wait let me continue right there. let me draw one more time yeah so it's in the middle here okay and each 10 divided uh, 10 minus 0 is 10 and you have five spaces so each square is two and it's in the middle between so this is over here seven months okay so why don't you go from 95 to 47.5 okay because that's not what my graph shows me 
my graph shows me the total counts okay so and i should be looking at the total counts okay um, the graph doesn't show me uh, the measurement of the radiate of the, of the source radiation it shows me the measurement of the total counts uh, detected by the detector so and i have to see both of them i have to compare both uh, radiations of the detector 120 72.5 for seven minutes so huh? question 17 so, and see why this is a bit confusing is because some people they would go from 120 to 60 and they would say it's 10 minutes no, that's not how you do it okay always remember half life when you, when you when you're talking about the source and all and stuff you have to look at uh what i mean you have to look at the total thing you have to add it up i, I, I don't want to confuse you guys i'll go next uh, the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,700. A wooden instrument found in the archaeological excavation archaeological excavations was found to contain 12.5% of its original carbon content. Whatever. Okay. <clears throat> the approximate age of this in in instrument is... Okay. We want to know how many half-lives. Okay. Obviously. How do I know how many half-lives if they told me it's 12.5%? Okay. Remember. Okay. Quantity final. Let's call it mass final equals uh mass initial over uh was was it two to the power of n yeah so the mass final here in this case would be 12.5 percent okay equals the initial mass which we could just say 100 percent divided by two to the power of n okay so let's just cancel percentage i don't want to work with percentages okay you're gonna get two to the power of n equals 100 divided by 12.5 and you're gonna get Again, 2 to the power of n equals 8, similar to the last one. So, how many half-lives would I have? 3, because 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Huh? So, I have 3 half-lives. How do I find the time if each half-life is 5,700? Just multiply by 3, it's not like 17,100 years. Question 18. 14, okay, we have carbon here, nitrogen, okay. What type of radioactive decay? Obviously, if the mass is 0, we know it's beta. If it's mass is 0 and it has a charge, yeah, it's beta. Okay, that's it for this quiz. Thank you so much for watching.